So I never really know how to make videos like this. This is uh, a good video, a positive vibe video, but also one that's very reflective and uh, looking back on a lot of things. Uh, and, and it's a very weird time to do it because you would figure this is not really the right time to do it. You know, what, what are we talking about? Uh, you're about to talk about your channel. You're about to, um, you know, I'm about to talk about how thankful I am for everything and nothing really happened. Uh, there's not, there, there's not any major milestones we've hit or, um, anything in particular that needs to be addressed. I, I just, I've been sitting here all day. Uh, you know, I, I had a couple of videos I was working on. I ended up scrapping them because I, I've had one thought on my mind since yesterday. And look, if you are a uh, team member of the Nintendo by podcast, you already know, because I talked about this last night afterwards to our fellow co-host of the show um, and to Eric. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to, I haven't had a chance to really talk to, to Yulia about it yet because she's uh, was sleeping, obviously, at the end of my show and went to work this morning. So hopefully I'll get to share a little bit with her uh, on this, uh, when she gets home from work today, but I am so incredibly thankful for my YouTube journey. Uh, if you guys don't know, this channel's existed since April 8th, 2008. Uh, and it, it was the Zelda informer YouTube channel. And the YouTube channel was founded as a way for us to announce the merging of my Zelda site, absolute Zelda and, uh, Dennis Wyman's website, uh, Zelda Informer and in merging them together uh, I was to become editor-in-chief and uh, basically run all the day-to-day -day stuff I do a lot of managing as well uh, and it, it, YouTube wasn't really a big part of the plan uh, we just wanted to use YouTube as a place to host any sort of video or audio content because it was very expensive to host that locally on a website server you know 2008 was still a time period where websites were the place to go for everything and while they're still the place to go for some things uh, i would argue that youtube and, and and social media platforms have become the first go-to like the, think about this for a second when you grab your cell phone uh, outside of checking text messages from friends and family what's the next thing you do on your phone I bet you you load some sort of social media platform, right? I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's Instagram or Twitter or Blue Sky or Threads or Facebook or uh, Snapchat or whatever it is. You're probably opening up some sort of social media thing because that is what has become first in our lives when we think about using the internet. And back in April of 2008, that wasn't you know necessarily the case. Like smartphones had just come out in 2007 with the invention of the iPhone, but it wasn't something that uh, was our go-to. We certainly used social media platforms. You know, we had our MySpace and our Facebook back then, and early days of YouTube and stuff. But we we didn't have you know a whole lot that we were really thinking about. Um, and I wasn't taking YouTube that seriously. Uh, again, we uploaded some stuff at the channel, but you know I think it's appropriate to show uh, some of that stuff I uploaded. So just bear with me. It was a completely unscripted video. I had one thing loaded up I was going to show you guys, but I wasn't planning on this. So I, I think it's, you know, we should go back to the early days of the channel here and just kind of show you what's going on. I mean, you could see all the way back, you know, dawn of a new day. What did I say our first video was? The fusion of Zelda Informer and Absolute Zelda. Literally the very first video we made was a 43 second meme filled announcement of, uh, of merging my Zelda website and another Zelda website together. And then you can see what did we host again 15 years ago? Uh, that one uh, infamous uh, fan-made Hero of Time uh, movie that YouTube ended up getting a little bit mad about. We had a bunch of stuff with them because we were working with them at Zelda Informer to help promote uh, their movie. Uh, then you can see, you know, we did Spirit Tracks trailers uploads. Like we would just do trailer uploads of Zelda stuff. Uh, then at one point we made a top 10 Zelda songs. This was a combination of the entire voting of the staff. We hosted each song here on uh on youtube but we weren't really using youtube in traditional ways uh, this was maybe the first time around the time spirit tracks came out we dropped a, a video of every single boss fight uh, we had some direct capture uh, equipment back then so we we did that and we created these and these were probably the first time we really got traction on youtube uh, but again 
None of this was like personality forward and any of this. This was just promotional stuff, our top 10 list. And then like, hey, we wanted these videos to put into our walkthroughs on our website. And that's why these existed. We didn't know they were going to get 100,000 views. We didn't know the final boss part three was going to get 290,000 views. We had no idea the potential of YouTube 14 years ago. And I say we because there was a team of us. It wasn't just me. Um, and then like, here's one of like the first Zelda thons. You remember how big Zelda thon is today? Yeah. December 7, 2009, like way back in the day, we were helping promote that as well uh, in its early days and in its infamous, infamacy. This is a Demir. Uh, <laughs> haven't talked to him in a long time, uh, but he did uh, a little Maladus theme on the guitar. He was just trying to take advantage of these views. He thought, hey, people are going to maybe want to hear see some more Spirit Tracks content on our channel, right? Um, and then uh, this was our first like editorial type video. I made this video, Zelda Wii, mixed with less equals more concept. It was my first sort of editorialized video I put out on the channel. And again, didn't do that well, 1.4K. We were really small. Back in this day, we're, we're talking like a hundreds of subscribers. We weren't even at a thousand subscribers yet. Um, but things kind of slowly grew over time. We ended up having the whole hero time. Um, this was a custom uh, rap album uh, that the guy let us host on our channel because we just, you know, got more attention on our specific website than he did so he let us host this and a lot of these views just came off the website not directly youtube and then this is my first ever video on camera the zi video cast number two there was a number one at one point but i uh accidentally deleted it <laughs> so uh this is the first time i appear on the channel wearing a new york jets hat by the way i'm not a new york jets fan um brett Favre and all that was was on the team and i enjoyed brett Favre as a packer fan so I was kind of supporting. It was easy to support the Jets at the time. It's like, well, they're in the AFC, not the NFC, right? So I don't really have to worry about the Jets until they, you know, until unless the Packers and the Jets would have met in the Super Bowl or something. But uh, anyways, <laughs> trying to be a smart Alec back then. Uh, we did. We, then we tried launching a podcast. You'll see uh, our first attempt at a podcast. Uh, we were trying to talk about Spirit Tracks, obviously, because it was popular on the channel. Um, then we had the Ocarina of Rhyme. Uh, we had all of these. Uh, this album on here as well that we got permission to host. And then you'll see that I'm back on camera again as we're trying to expand our video cast. Uh, this is Cody. Uh, he used to be the editor in chief over at Zelda Universe. I don't think he does any. I don't think he's really even attached to that website anymore. Last I talked to him. Um, and you guys might remember the Legend of Zelda: Misadventures of Link. Uh, this one. I don't know why we have this video. We didn't make this. This was made by like. I don't even remember. It was made by a really popular website. Maybe it just wasn't available on YouTube at the time that we put it up uh, we, and we felt like it should have been. I don't know. They never yelled at us about it, uh, but for some reason we put that up on here. It's probably my decision. And then you'll see that we kind of advanced eventually. Uh, we were talking about 3D.Game Heroes for a bit because it's a good game. But then you'll see that we really started building up the Zelda Informer podcast. We had all these different people on. We were using icons to represent us so people didn't have to come on camera because coming on camera 14 years ago was kind of taboo for a podcast to have that many people on camera. And we kind of just kept going from there. And you'll see, I started doing more on camera stuff, bringing the video cast, doing more um, opinion pieces. We had Cody come on to talk about some Nintendo news. And you'll just see some younger versions of me fully shaved. Uh, a lot of this is in an old place I used to live. Uh, I was only paying $200 rent a month for one room in this house uh, back then. Pretty, pretty interesting story for that. But as we go down, You'll just see the channel advance. We talked a lot about Zelda. You know, we brought on uh, this Erica person who was a news writer at the website, but she had some skill with the ocarina. We thought it'd be really cool if she played some songs on the ocarina for the channel, and she did. Erica's ocarina experience. I haven't talked to her in forever either. And you see even this one, like, look at that, 15,000 views. I mean, obviously, she's talented. Uh, I really hope that she's her life has been going well for her since those days. Because, again, a lot of these people I'm not in touch with anymore. Uh, Zelda Informer was a lot of a volunteer basis. I didn't even get paid. Most of the time I worked at Zelda Informer, it really wasn't until like the last handful of years. Uh, but it, it's fascinating to look at the history of the channel because this is it. Like it's, it's Zelda stuff for so many years. We were such a small channel, but over time we were able to build up about 20,000 subscribers. Um, you know, and, and, and again, we, we did this Wind Waker walkthrough, Wind Waker HD walkthrough that ended up doing pretty well on the channel as well. And we started realizing that walkthrough content, video content wise is a good idea. So. Uh, we ended up trying to do an Ocarina of Time 3D one as well. Didn't get as much traction with it, unfortunately. But, you know, we, we were trying things. We were trying things. These are the early days of YouTube. We didn't know what we were doing. Um, you know, this is where we tried having like people race in different Zelda games, like a dual play. Hey, you play this one, play, and, and kind of race against each other. Um, so we just had a lot of different concepts uh, with this channel over the years as Zelda Informer. But now we're going to get up 
uh, more towards the modern days, you know, right when we had the whole Zelda Wii U thing going on. Um, the Boss Man, you know, one of my original shows I created back then. Uh, shout out to the people who helped me make that show. Shout out to, to Zach Carson as well. Uh, he was doing some of the video editing for us back then just because I uh, didn't know what I was doing, right? Um, you go down and eventually we're going to get to the point where, where, where this turns into Nintendo Prime. So you can see we definitely were putting out content and trying our best to make compelling stuff. Uh, this is the guy we hired to do uh, news videos because I was handling all the written news. Have him do the, the video version of that written news um, like once a week. But anyways, uh, as we go down, uh, everything starts to transition here. We got We got our podcast going. We rebooted it. But uh, we're getting to the point now where I, you see the Nintendo Prime podcast, um, where I was let go at Zelda Informer, booted out, and I was able to negotiate on my way out to keep the YouTube channel. And you'll see this, so we've undergone some changes. And this is me using a green screen for like my first time, uh, looking all nice and chubby on screen. I, you know, I'm a big boy. And uh, it kind of went from there. That was seven years ago. So you think about where we've gone um over the years we had about twenty thousand subscribers when we switched the channel name to zelda informer we ended up losing about three thousand of our subscribers when we rebranded uh that's a scary thing about rebranding you don't know who's going to stick by and uh you kind of look at it now as in seven years you know we're at one hundred thirty-six thousand subscribers uh in seven years we have added you know 123 24 thousand subscribers to the channel uh to me that's it's special uh yesterday a lot of things were happening really fast um and i felt like i handled it pretty well at the time but i've, I've been kind of emotional about it since I'm, i wear my emotions on my sleeve uh you can even look over here here's our channel analytics for uh subscriber count it's kind of broken in 2008 you know this early period i don't know why youtube or whatever i'm sure any channels under this old maybe things are broken back then but you can kind of see that we weren't really growing that much we've gained a few subscribers um here and there um all the way until about well right in this area here is where we kind of started getting a little bit of growth and this is when i was doing uh end of 2017 beginning of 2018 i was doing you know a lot of live streams and starting to do nintendo news videos here on youtube um, but things still kind of like stayed mostly not growing that much. You know, we had a, a little thing in 2019, uh, and then we got to 2020 and we had a nice little boost here, uh, in 2020. A lot of this was from, uh, uh 3d all-stars, 3d all-stars. Uh, and then you'll see this massive spike here. Th th this little spike here, we got to around 70,000 subscribers. And then you'll see this right here. This is the big one. Uh, this is tears of the kingdom. So you can see what Tears of the Kingdom did for us last year. If we can even go like this and go look at 2023, I mean, th this is insane. I mean, look at this is all. This is this is basically Tears of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom. Tears. We even had a day where we lost 676, but it didn't matter because then we bounced right back and gained 530, 535. Had another day of 991. So like we were just doing insane. This is all Tears of the Kingdom for like two months, um, and that took the channel. We saw you saw 49,000. 49.2 thousand subscribers that you took the channel over 100k all the way above 130,000 subscribers and then see the rest of the year we kind of just lost we were in like a kind of it didn't matter really what i did uh we could never really gain momentum back and then you get to 2024 and for some reason at the beginning of the year we started having subtraction and right here this 190 that we gained on uh march 2024 we hit 135,000 subscribers. And obviously you can go look at the channel right now and we've hit 136 and it's pretty obvious why. If you go back and look here, all we did was lose subscribers. Remember when we talked about how Nintendo channels were struggling for three months? This is the three months I'm talking about. Like right in here, you could just see the struggle. The, the negative subscribers, I'm, you know, not even looking at the views. You could see the struggle. And then you could see something happened um, around July. I don't know really what it was. We started to grow a little bit. Uh, but just a little bit and then it just kind of kept going kept going kept going and now we have a nice little boost here in subscribers that we've had mostly from our switch to coverage last week uh and now we've hit 136 and i don't know if this channel is ever going to get to the heights i wanted to get to right my 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 goal deep down is a million i don't I, I i want that play button back there to not be so damn lonely i want there to be a gold one next to it you know i it's just something i want to achieve 
at some point in my YouTube career. Maybe we get there. And I don't know. Like our, our current goal right now is to get to 150,000 subscribers. And maybe I should be aiming for 140. But my point is like every thousand subscribers feels so special to me. Uh, special to me in ways that I, I can't even I can't even explain because I think that a lot of us as we get bigger we start to lose sight of what a thousand people subscribing to your YouTube channel actually means a thousand people are choosing to watch my content even if it's not daily even if it's just once a week or maybe it's just a live stream so they're still choosing to watch and then uh, we had a video, you know, pop off yesterday. I'll show you guys uh, the analytics on that quick, just because you guys made this happen. Obviously, we had um, all those uh, leaks uh, yesterday. Let me see here if I can find a way to cleanly show this. Uh, let's find a way if I can uh, cleanly uh, show this here. So this is our, our video yesterday. You guys know we had those image leaks, um, some spec stuff, and you'll see almost 35,000 views, 3.6K, over 120, 119 subscribers, 150 bucks. The money part doesn't matter to me so much as the rest of this. You guys made that happen, but the thing is, it didn't stop there. Um, something happened I didn't expect, and I thought the show would do well. Uh, I really did think the show would actually do really, really well. Um, what I didn't think it was going to do, what I didn't think the show was going to do is this. And we're, of course, we're talking about our podcast, uh, the Nintendo Byte podcast. The, we rebooted the podcast this year. It's been getting better views than our Nintendo Prime podcast. You guys need to like the Nintendo Byte and our structure better. But uh, we went ahead and look at this. Look at this. 11,399 views. 11,400. We just gained a view while recording this video. That is our biggest podcast by over 4,000 views ever. We've done hundreds of Nintendo Prime uh, podcast episodes. We're obviously up to 21 Nintendo Byte podcast episodes. We just had 11,400 people tune in and have our biggest show ever. Why? Because there was some image leaks on the internet. <laughs> like, then the image leaks are really cool. And I don't know where Switch 2 is going to take us. I don't know if this is a sign that like... Hey, that Tears of the Kingdom wave, well, this is a more sustainable one. Here's Switch 2, and we're riding it to the freaking moon, and we're going to hit a million, and we're going to do all this crazy stuff, and the podcast is going to now start getting five, six, seven thousand 7,000 views every single time instead of the usual three to four. I don't know. But what I do know is I'm so thankful. Um, look, tonight on my live stream, because we're going to do a live stream tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time, I'm probably going to be pretty emotional talking about this same thing all over again. Um, because this is just who I am. I'm a very, very thankful person. Uh, I remember not just the channel being small. I remember uh, some of the early days of this YouTube channel. I was sleeping out of my car in a Walmart parking lot. And you fast forward to today. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the date here, September 19th, 2024. And I'm a father of three beautiful children and I'm doing YouTube for a living. Like this is how I support my family. And I, I can't thank you guys enough for enabling me to chase my dreams. I don't know where Switch 2 is going to take us. I don't know where Nintendo is going to take us. I don't know if I'm going to blow all this and get canceled on the internet and lose everything I've built up. I have no idea. All I do know is I'm here to bring you guys my excitement and my passion for Nintendo and their next systems and their next games and just enjoy this journey together. Um, so all that is just to say... Thank you. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. I'll catch you tonight on our live stream.